Primetime Live continues from the Sony Pictures Studios in Los Angeles. Once again, Diane Sawyer. And with me, of course, Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley. Welcome to Primetime. Thank Glad you. Glad you're here. Thank you. It occurs to me, looking at the two of you, I have got to start by asking how this marriage took place, how it began. Let me guess that it was not over miniature golf and a, and a hot dog someplace. <laughs> when did it start? When was the dating? Well, we first met, she was seven years old and I was 17. This was in Las Vegas. She used to come and see my show all the time. We had the only family show on the Strip. It was the Jackson Five. And um, she used to come as a little girl and sit right up front. She came quite often, but she came with a lot of bodyguards. And, and had you stayed in touch over all these sure, years? Sure, sure. And then she'd come backstage. Then I'd you know, talk and say hi, and then she'd come again. And I thought she was sweet and loving, and I, hope I, I always hoped I'd see her again. And who first talked about marriage? We didn't stay in touch. After we didn't that. stay in touch after that, no. He, he had, go ahead, you want to say what happened? No, later you can with say, you, you have a good memory. No, you said you were going to say it. <laughs> Our first argument okay. here on <laughs> this hour. Um, who, who proposed? I mean, how did marriage actually get discussed? Well, 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 at first, this is what happened. When she was 18, I used to tell my lawyer, John Branca, do you know Lisa Marie Presley? He go, well, I represent her mother. I go, well, can you get in touch with her? Because I think she's really cute. And he'd laugh every time. He goes, I'll do my best. That's what he'd say. Then he'd come back. I said, well, did you find out? He said, no, there's nothing. So I would worry him about this all the time. And the next thing I noticed, there's a picture on a, a magazine cover where she's married, which really tore me to pieces. And then, really Because I felt that was supposed to be me. I really did. And what, what was the countdown to your marriage? Tell me. Who said the word marriage first? I did. He did. I did. When? Where? When? On where? the telephone. <clears throat> on oh, yeah, telephone. yeah, on the telephone. He first asked me. When? We were dating now for four months. Um, right? Four months? I don't remember. Well, anyway, we were spending a lot of time together. I don't know how I didn't manage to get in the press because we weren't hiding it. I was in Las Vegas. We were in we Neverland. Were everywhere. We were everywhere. I went to Ed Book Lakuta, stores. Atlanta. We were in bookstores. We were not hiding it. And you said re yes right away? I was separated for four months, and I said, he said, what would you do if I asked you to marry me? And I said, I would. Um, A but, big I would, though. You were really enthusi enthusiastic. Um, <laughs> I have to ask you this, because I can only imagine the number of lawyers involved in a prenuptial agreement between these two fortunes. Mm -hmm. Is there one? A careful one? Well, we've worked out things, and we've signed certain things, but of course. That's very confidential. We agree. We made agreements prior, yes. As you know, the reaction to this marriage, and I know you feel strongly about it, but the reaction to this marriage has been across the spectrum, everything from astonishment to delight to suspicion, that it was somehow too convenient. Lisa, did, did you ask Michael about the charges? Did the two of you talk about the impact of the marriage on the allegations? Absolutely not. He called, I was in touch with him through the whole process of this charges going on. I was talking to him when he disappeared. I was actually supposed to go to San Juan, Puerto Rico when he left and disappeared. And I got a call that he wasn't going to be there. And I was actually part of the whole thing with him, but talking to him on the phone. So did I didn't. Did you say to him, are they true? No, I didn't. No, I actually did not. I want to take a minute here, and I'm going to come back to the Can marriage. Just, sorry, he yes. he went on and on and on about it. So I didn't really have to say, "Are the allegations true?" It was, you know, ah, on the phone, you know, and over and over, just again. constant. Yeah. Well, because I know that you've wanted to express similar sentiments for a long time, I want to ask a few things about the charges. But first, I want to establish for the viewers here: there are no ground rules. You have said to me you are not afraid of any questions. So. I wanted that understood by everybody before we proceed. I think I want to begin by making sure that the terms are clear. You have said that you would never harm a child. I want to be specific as I can. Did you ever, as this young boy said you did, did you ever 
sexually engage, fondle, have sexual contact with this child or any other child? Never, ever. I could never harm a child or anyone. It's not in my heart. It's not who I am. And it's not what I'm in. I'm not even interested in that. And what do you think should be done to someone who does that? To someone who does that? What well, I think it should be done? Gee, I think they need help in some kind of way, you know? How about the police photographs, though? How was there enough information from this boy about those kinds of things? The police photographs, police that, photographs. that they took of me. Yes. There was nothing that matched me to those charges. There was nothing. nothing. There was nothing that concurred. That's nothing? why I'm sitting here there talking to you today. Every, there was not one iota of information that was found that could connect me to So when we've heard that charges, there was a marking nothing. of some kind. No markings. No markings. No. Why did you Why so, am I still here then? You're not going to ask me about that, are you? <laughs> Sorry, about the markings. <laughs> you can <laughs> volunteer. No, I'm just... The point is, is that when that finally got concluded that there was no matchup, then it was printed this big, as opposed to how big it was, what the matchup was supposed to be. It didn't and work. It never. It, never it, it isn't so. It, the Why whole did thing you is settle a lie. the case then? Why did you settle the case? And and it looks to everyone as if you paid a huge amount of money. Well, that's well, most of that's to get folklore. Silence. I talked to my lawyers and I said, "Can you guarantee me that justice will prevail?" And they said, Michael, we cannot guarantee you that a judge or a jury will do anything. And with that, I was like catatonic. I was outraged. How much money Totally was it? outraged. So what I said, I have got to do something to get out from under this nightmare. All these lies and all these people coming forward to get paid and, the, and these tabloid shows, just lies, 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 lies. So what I did, we got together again with my advisors and they advised me, it was hands down, a unanimous decision, resolve the case. This could be something that could go on for seven years. How much money said, let's was get it? it behind us. Can you say get how it? much? It's not what the tabloids have printed. It's not all this crazy outlandish money. No, it's not at all. I mean, the terms of the agreement are very confidential. I want to ask... He's been barred to discuss it. They, they, the specific the specific terms. terms. You know, so but a specific amount. The, the idea <clears throat> is just isn't fair. What they put me through, because there wasn't one piece of information that says I did that. In any way, they turned my room upside down, went through all my books, all my videotapes, what? all my private things, and they found nothing, nothing, nothing that can say Michael Jackson did this. Nothing. But let me ask you to a this couple day, of questions. Nothing. Let, Still nothing. Let me ask nothing, you. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing. Nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> As you may or may not know, we have called everyone we can call. We have checked everything we can check. We have gone and tried to see if what we heard before is in fact the case. I want to ask you about two things. These reports that we read over and over again, that in your rooms they found photographs of young boys. Not of young adults. Young boys, not children, all kind of girls and everything. Then that they found photographs, books, of young boys who were <coughs> undressed. No. Didn't happen. No, not that I know of, unless people sent me things that I haven't opened. People, sent, people know my love for children, so they send me books from all over the world, from South America, from Germany, from Italy, from Sweden. So if people have, say that, that they found those things, if there's an indication, let them come forward, let them produce them, right? Yeah, because I get all, I, I get all you, you wouldn't believe the amounts of mail that I get. And if you say to somebody, you know, if I let the fans know I love Charlie Chaplin, I'll be swarmed in Charlie Chaplin paraphernalia. One of the but if questions. I say I love children, which I do, they swarm me with everything pertaining to kids. Any other settlements in process now or previously with children making these kinds of claims? We have heard that there is one. Not, not a case that the prosecutors no. would bring in court, but that once again you're talking about shelling out. No, that's not true. No. no. No, it's not true. I think I've heard everything is fine and there are no others. I guess, let me ask this, and I'm trying to think how to phrase it, though. I can hear out in the country <clears throat> people saying, and, and you've been cleared of all the charges, we want to make that clear. People saying, look, here is a man who is surrounded by things that children love. Here is a man who's been an inordinate amount of time with these young boys. That's right. What is a 36-year-old man doing sleeping with a 12-year-old boy or a series of them. Right. Okay, when you say boys, it's not just boys, and I've never invited just boys to come in my room. Come on, that's ridiculous. And that's a ridiculous question. But like, since people want to hear it, you know, the answer, I'll be happy to answer it. I have never invited anyone into my bed, ever. Children love me, I love them. They follow me. They want to be with me. 
but anybody can come in my bed. Child can come in my you know, bed I can if they say, want. I can, I can say, sorry, I've seen this. I've seen it a lot. I've seen kids. I've seen him with children in the last year. I've seen it enough to where I can see how that can happen. It's, you know, I but understand. Isn't part of being an adult, and you have a two-year-old child, two-year-old huh. boy. Yeah, let me just, let me just, sorry. Okay. I, I just wanted to say that I've seen these children. They don't let him go to the bathroom without running in there with them. And they won't let him out of their sight. But so when he jumps in the bed, I'm even out. You know, they, they jump in the bed with him. But isn't part of being an adult and loving children, keeping children from ambiguous situations? And again, we're talking about over an intense period of time here. Would you let your son, when he grows up, and is 12 years old, do that. You know what, if I, if I didn't know who Michael, no way. But I happen to know who he is and what he is. And that makes it, you know, I know that he's not, you know, I know that he's not like that and I know he has a thing for children. And I, go ahead, sorry. I just wonder, is it over? You're gonna make sure it doesn't happen again. I think this is really is the key over? thing people wanna know, that, that they're not gonna be more of these sleepovers mm -hmm. in which people have to wonder. Nobody wonders when kids sleep over at my house. But Nobody are they wonders. over? Are you, are you going to watch out for it now? Watch out for Just what? for the sake of the children and for no, everything you've been all, through. No, because it's all moral and it's all pure. I don't even think that way. It's not what's in my heart. So you'll, you'll do it again. I would never, ever do it, what again? I mean, you'll have a child sleeping over. Of course. Over. They want. Yes. It's on the level of purity and love and just innocence, complete innocence. If you're talking about sex, and that's a nut. That's not me. Go to the guy down the street, because it's not Michael Jackson. It's not what I'm interested in. OK, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, Elizabeth Taylor talked to us a little bit about what she saw when she went over and talked to you in the middle of this and helped you get treatment for oh, wow. addiction to painkillers. Elizabeth is on the show. When we come back. Live from the Sony Pictures Studios in Los Angeles, once again, Diane Sawyer. As we said, Elizabeth Taylor is going to talk a little bit about when she came to see you in the middle of this, what she called agony. One of the things she was so, I think she was so angry about with us was that she said people always talk about one side of a person, they never give them credit for their accomplishments, That's right. particularly what they give to children and the money you give to children. That's how it starts. When he's on tour, he goes to hospitals w without the press following him, without anyone knowing. He'll get up in a disguise and do it, take his disguise off when he's there, and kids know, wow, it's Michael Jackson. Was there no point at which you said to yourself, reading everything everybody had been reading, maybe this is true, maybe I completely didn't no. understand who he was? No way. Absolutely not. Never? Never. I know Michael's heart. I know his mind and his soul. I'm not that insensitive, especially to him or people I love. How did you decide to go to Singapore? He was my friend. He was alone. He was totally alone. And he just... Uh, needed help. Nothing in the world could have hurt him more. If it had been calculated, if they'd planned an assassination, they couldn't have done it any better. It almost, it almost broke his heart. She says she recognized a friend turning to painkillers for escape. He wasn't aware of what was happening. He was dulling his pain. But it really frightened me because I have been there. And I, I know how easy it is to get there when you're in mental uh, or physical pain. And he knew right away that he had to deal with it, too? Not right away. Not right away, but he knew. There were some reports during this period, Michael, that it was such agony for you that you were actually <clears throat> suicidal. Is that true? I was never suicidal. I love life too much to ever be suicidal. I'm resilient. I have rhinoceros skin. Never, ever suicidal. Did it leave you, though, heartbroken, but not suicidal? 
Did it leave you changed completely? I, I've talked to you a little bit about what you're thinking about, where you want to live in the world. Did it change your view about living here? You're thinking about living someplace else. I don't care to stay in America anymore, no. I, I don't care. I, I will always have Neverland, you know, because I, I love Neverland. But I don't like, I'm very sensitive to the smog, you know, so I can't have the smog. And uh, I would like to go abroad. Matter of fact, I am. You are? Where? Yes. Oh, I haven't decided the exact place yet. Probably South Africa. To maybe. live permanently. Maybe uh, Switzerland. Lisa, are Can you we just in change, favor of it? Wait, just go into the fact that we don't live in separate houses for to start yeah, this. We way. don't live in separate. This is just this is ridiculous. Where the cameras? Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, jump in. What? What do I feel about the overseas thing? I mm -hmm. think that it's a nice place to visit. Yes, I would like to have a a, a house over there. Mm. Would be completely and utterly harassed beyond belief, but. <laughs> Before we move away from the last two years, we told you, because we want to, that we are going to show what is really your comment on those two years. And it is a video you have done with your sister Janet called Scream. And in it, you have some words for middle-aged people who can't follow these words. Uh, the words you'll hear will be about confusion, bashing, victimizing. Stop pressuring me, he says. Makes me want to scream the last two years. of the two of you, and I'm going to let you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here. If our director, Roger Goodman, wants to roll it in, we will take you there a year ago, right? Yes. Just about exactly. <laughs> I look like an idiot, I can tell you that. You don't look like an idiot. <laughs> you look more like a, uh, no. no. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you? Yes. We're watching it. Tell us. Oh, we're watching. Tell us, we're watching here live. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. I do. Yes. Michael Joseph Jackson. Yeah. I do. Yeah. In the middle, he asks for his autograph. You know, you know. Yeah, I do more. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Right, but now we're out of time. So, I know that you, Lisa Marie, have wanted to talk about this. There are a lot of doubters about this marriage. I've heard that it's a Scientology plan. You are a member of the Church of Scientology, which is said to influence its members greatly, and that the husband you divorced was Scientologist, and he's still very much in your life, and this is all part of a calculation to get Michael and his money into the church. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's crap. I'm sorry. It, it's like ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I'm not... Um, first of all, you can't get influenced by anything. Um, like that, and, and on, under a term of a marriage, um, I'm not going to marry somebody for any reason other than the fact that I fall in love with them. Period. Period. And they can eat it if they want to think anything different. <laughs> to put it succinct. Yeah. What is it you love the most about him? Oh, um, what do I love the most about him? Everything. I, he's amazing. I really admire him. I respect him. I admire him. I'm in love with him. And no, uh, we don't sleep in separate bedrooms. Thank you very much. And, um, I love everything about him. To finish up on that, though, are you a Scientologist? Or mm, no. No. Plan to become one? I believe in spirituality, and I believe in a higher source, such as God, but I'm not a Scientologist. I read everything, and I like to read. I love to study. You said you don't sleep in separate bedrooms, and I'm going to confess, okay, this is live TV, and I'm copping out right here because I didn't spend my life as a serious journalist to ask these kinds of questions. But I'm not oblivious to the fact that your fans 
had one question they most wanted to ask of you. Do we have sex? We have. <laughs> you. <laughs> she, she, she didn't ask. ask. <laughs> she I didn't ask. I won't ask. Okay. Go you ahead. don't know what it go was going to be. Is that what you were going to ask? Let's play just a minute or Sorry. two. Sorry. <laughs> Let's play one or two. We want to know if you've done the thing. Michael, I know that this is an intimate question, but are you having sex together with Lisa Marie? Do you guys really love each other or you're just doing this to satisfy the media? Are you guys intimate? Again, I can't believe wow. it. This is about hmm. the skepticism. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and <laughs> we have read in the papers that you are expecting a child. We will be expecting a child. No, when, I'm not going to. We're not going to say when. It's or, personal. It's in the hands of the heavens. But not yet. Did well, we marry out of convenience? That's really interesting to me. That's, that's really ridiculous. interesting to me. Why? Well, why wouldn't we have a lot in common? That's the question. Why? Why not? Like we're faking this? Like, uh, no. Ridiculous but you can't live with somebody day to day. We're together all the time, first of all. Second thing, how can you fake that 24 hours a day with somebody, sleeping with somebody, waking up with somebody, having it's the to, dumbest thing he's I've He's running ever around heard. the house, I'm running around the house, you were in our house, we have a normal house, we have a nanny, we have a maid, and we walk around and he's either in the studio, I'm in the kitchen, we're running around like uh, normal, I know it's hard to believe people. You go shopping together, you... We go shopping, we go out to dinner, we argue sometimes. And about <laughs> what, may I say? <laughs> We you also heard a report that maybe you were planning to adopt the children. Oh, I would love to adopt children. I think that's something I've always wanted to do. But children of all races, Arab children, Jewish children, black children, just all races. But Lisa's children? The, we, I love Lisa's children, children but, but it's been a mission. to adopt? Or Pardon? To adopt them, though. Oh, I love her children. They're sweet. But to adopt, no. Of course. He, they have a biological father, and he's the he's their. I think they love me very much. I love them. They do. We have a lot but, of. Fun. But I've never heard of that before, personally, of, of someone adopting someone's children while they're in a relationship with that person. We're going to take a break for a minute and come back with more questions. Okay. I want to say. Michael Jackson, Lisa Marie Presley, live from the Sony Picture Studios in Los Angeles. Once again, Diane Sawyer. We're going to show you a film now created by Michael Jackson, and it is causing a furor in some movie theaters around this country. They say, among other things, that it is clearly modeled after Triumph of the Will, Lainey Riefenstahl, a Nazi film it's with not Nazi true. None imagery. of that's true. None of those things are true. Did you watch that film before you did it? I watch everything. I love movies. So you, I love documentaries. It had nothing to do with that at all. But there are people who keep saying, this is, they look at it and say, this is absolutely not. You it's know what? nothing to do with politics or communism or fascism Well, at all. The critics have said that it's the most boldly vainglorious self-deification a pop singer ever undertook with a straight Face. Good. That's what I wanted. For the controversy? Yeah. And they the fell into my trap. For the people I wanted, who say that I wanted everybody's attention. But for the people who say those symbols matter, no, the they're symbol, about no, suffering. No, no. The symbol has nothing to do with that. It's not political. It's not fascist. It's not dogma. It's not, you know, ideology and all of this stuff. It's pure, simple love. You don't see any tanks. You don't see any cannons. It's about love. It's people coming together. About love. We're going to let everybody watch a bit. Yeah, but it's art. It's art. Okay. The way a director would a use a to create art. Up. Here it comes.
as we said, we're going to clearly agree to disagree maybe on what this means to some people watching it. There's been another issue raised in a song you say, Jumi Sumi, and some people are saying that that is anti-Semitic. It's not anti-Semitic because I'm not a racist person. I could never be a racist. I love all races of people from Arabs to Jewish people, like I said before, to blacks. But when I say Jew me, sue me, everybody do me, kick me, kike me, don't you black or white me, I'm talking about myself as the victim. You know, my, my accountants and lawyers are Jewish. My three best friends are Jewish. David Geffen, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Steven Spielberg, Mike Milken, these are friends of mine. They're all Jewish. So how does that make sense? I was raised in a Jewish community. I want to ask you both about something because it was the second most asked question by people on the street. And I know, I know it's a sensitive issue for you and you talked with Oprah about it. But somehow people still are not, they don't feel they've heard everything about the whiteness of your skin and that it's not somehow a choice on your part along with the makeup to be is it to be neither black or white neither to look completely male to be in the androgynous zone i, I think they want to know it is a decision on your part some way the way you look where does it come from i think it creates itself nature he's he's an artist he an has artist. every right and he is constantly remodifying something or changing it or reconstructing it or you know working on some imperfection that he thinks needs to be worked on if he sees something he doesn't like he changes it period he re-sculpted himself he's an artist i might want to put a red dot right there <laughs> one day. but but or two eyes right here do you wish you were the color you were again do i wish i was the that color that's nature that i loved i love but black I love Do you that. wish you were that way? I envy her because she can tan and I can't. One more question I want to make sure I ask. Are you going to sing together? No. I would love to sing with you. Mm -mm. Would you, you like to sing with me? You don't sing? I don't sing. I, I did sing, but that's not why I married Michael. Um, yeah. I don't need that. That's ridiculous. If I wanted it, I mean, I'm not going to marry someone for a recording career just to clear that up as well. Um, what? <laughs> Stop. Um, I'm going to let the two of you duke this out over <laughs> here. We'll take a break. And we'll <laughs> ah. Stop. Prime Time, live from Los Angeles. And as our hour ends, I'd like to just ask each of you for a one sentence answer. Time's so short. Where do you want to be in five years? Oh boy, uh, I love what I'm doing now and to do everything I can to help the children. And hello, Bobby Sherrod. <laughs> I just want people to know what they're dealing with before and understand that I'm not the, you know, that we are not. The jokes, the degrading comments, all that kind of stuff, it's really irritating. So I didn't get to, to get into that. This is over already, but um, stuff. We want to choke them. All right, yeah, so five years. Years. Don't believe the garbage. All the tabloid junk. Don't read it. Don't listen to it. It's garbage. It's junk. It's stupid. And so, enough of it. And tonight is over. <laughs> Look at that. He's a nut. He's a we nut. will love. Uh, we'll probably have some final thoughts on all this ourselves next week. <laughs> Until then, I'm Diane Sawyer, and I hope you join Sam.